ever been storm held and thought, what's wrong with this guy? Ever been in a fight and weren't able to get the kill because he just kept building? Yeah, we've been there. That's why today we're bringing you the six different categories of players that you'll meet in Fortnite. However, this video isn't just to let you know who they are. We'll also show you how to spot, counter, and deal with them. My name is Dan, and I'm going to be your guide today. And also, be sure to show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you this video. Cast your vote in our Fortnite tiers list, and learn some tips and tricks that will set you apart from everyone else in the lobby. If you've played enough Fortnite, you probably realize that there are many different types of personality types in Battle Royales, and you run into them over and over again. We're going to be going over six distinct stereotypes, and see how exactly you can deal with them. Whether you're in arena, casual play, or LTMs, these types of players run rampant, so it's useful to know what you're up against. For our first category, we have the camper. This type of player doesn't just wander around Fortnite, you know, like a normal person. No, don't you hate it when you work so hard to make it to endgame just to be taken out by some guy hiding in a bush? Trust me when I say it's happened dozens and dozens of times. That is known as a camper. They usually manifest themselves in players who play very safe or who are hiding in various foliage and using ballers. I mean, let's be honest here. We've all used ballers before, and that's fine. But when you rely on the ballers, it's going to make you look bad. Unless you're Bizzle or something, and then it's pretty cool. Campers are usually not very confident and are looking for the win in sneakier ways, you know, by, like, avoiding playing the game. Unfortunately for them, Fortnite has reached its skill ceiling, and it's no longer possible to win this way, so these players aren't really much of a threat. After pushing them, they'll usually turtle up and throw down traps. The only way they can kill you is with a sniper shot or a lucky pump, but for the most part, they aren't your biggest threat. Next up, we have the Rusher. The rusher is the exact opposite of the camper. This guy wants to get into your face and take you out no matter what. I'm not talking about pub games where everybody rushes everybody. This is a different breed of aggression. The rusher will go the extra mile just to take you out. Often this is the guy that storm holds you and pushes you even though the circle is all the way on the other side of the map. The rusher usually has a good amount of mechanical skill because come on, who doesn't build up skill after engaging an enormous amount of players all the time? They're often so deadly, in fact, that they even have the potential of ruining the game for pro players. Their level of confidence is at an all-time high because they believe they can kill everyone and anyone. This sort of mindset is a very exceptional one. Except, they usually don't use it effectively. You usually won't find these guys on the leaderboard because they're too busy ruining other players' games. Confidence needs to be combined with efficiency and strategy in order to produce compounding results. You know, not just mindlessly attacking everyone you see. You know, stuff most players wouldn't do without thinking. There's a difference between calculated rushes and maniac rushes. The simple way to counter these guys is just learning how they play. Rushers usually don't think everything through, and many of their moves are very predictable. So they will usually always jump into your one by one. Be ready with a trap. After the rusher and the camper goes the low ground warrior. Everybody enjoys being a low ground warrior at some point in the game, but we all learn from our mistakes. Well, most of us. This is the type of guy who's so confident in his shot that he'll build very minimally. He's usually the one to strike first, and when he gets you low, be careful. He'll just stay below you, trying to knock you down while frightening you with his lethal but accurate shot. We've all run into this type of guy before, haven't we? On the bright side, he's quite easy to deal with. Many pro players do incorporate low ground warrior style of gameplay. Why, you may ask? It's an effective way to clean up players who are on low health or of lesser skill. Everybody knows that when your health tanks, it's either turtle time or building time. Now, what can we do to deal with these pesky low ground warriors? The way to outplay these guys is none other than building. That thing that they refuse to do. But how, you may ask? Low ground warriors are waiting for you to peek. So if you fly over them with a series of Tifu classics or poor edits, it's almost impossible for them to track you. He can only get a good shot off if he's expecting your peek. Here's an example. Point is, you don't want to peek since it's predictable. Throw him off guard, beat him at his own mind games, show him that you aren't afraid of his refusal to build. Our fourth and most annoying type of player is none other than the overbuilder. When we talk about overbuilding, what usually comes to mind is a controller playground warrior. The benefits of this style of gameplay are that it's often difficult to kill them. They can run around juking and building non-stop, until of course they run dry on mats. There goes their jump pad or porter rift. 
On the bright side, we do know that they're not very confident and want to be at a distance from you. That's why you usually see them from a safe building distance. Building away, of course. It may be hard to lock them down since they're always building and moving. You'll probably burn all your own materials and waste five minutes trying to just flush them out of their shell. This is problematic since in high level games, you don't have much time to finish someone off before a third party arrives. My advice, don't take fights against these guys in arena unless you have a definite way of killing them. However, there are many building techniques and exploits available to get inside someone's box if you really have to. Fast builders are often great editors as well, so these guys are going to be all the way up the sky by the time you look up. Now, let's cut down to how to deal with them. The simple workaround is that with a lot of building comes the need for a lot of materials. These players will usually run themselves dry very fast, especially in arena with limited resources. You can just wait for them to run out of materials, or just get up close and personal. Explosives work great too. Our fifth and most deceiving type of player are the Sweat. The Sweat is often referred to as a pro player, but this is inherently wrong. Many players won't be able to tell the difference, especially casuals. His building, aiming, and editing seems to be on par with the best of the best. He'll impress the masses into thinking he's top notch, yet he fails in the most crucial of areas. He doesn't have any real placement or stats to back up his claims. Many of these players master building, editing, and aiming. However, they lack in the most central area, which is decision making and creativity. Much of the high level gameplay revolves around making the right play, not the wrong one. Creativity as well is a crucial factor, since most pro players know all the moves, so a lot of fights come down to on-the-spot creativity. You might ask, how do I counter this guy when he's almost as good as a pro? To put things into perspective, a beginner or an average player doesn't have much of a chance versus a pro player because that's kind of just the way things are. Trust me, I feel bad about it too. Somebody who practices 10 hours a day is miles ahead of someone who only puts in a few hours weekly. However, when we compare two equally good players, it can kind of go either way. If you've been watching pro guides for quite some time, I'm sure you're making some serious progress, and it all comes down to making the right move. Sweats are often blindsided by their ego and are liable to make many mistakes. If you can catch on to them, then it'll be a lot easier to take them out. So to sum it all up, the sweat can be deceiving. This tryhard may give off the vibe that he's a pro player, however, he lacks the basic fundamentals required to truly be a high level player. He'll have many noticeable errors, and if you look more closely, you'll see a difference between the pro and him. Use that to your advantage, and stay confident, you got this. Alrighty guys, now we're off to our finalist. Now we have the three-time pro player. This guy's a master of his craft. He's somebody who's at the point where he doesn't lose to a lesser player. He just doesn't. There's a reason why players like Mongrel, Clix, Mr. Savage, and Bugha win nearly every engagement they come into. They've mastered A to Z and only die to rare cases. These guys are legends and titans in their fields. They've been grinding day in and day out since day one and won't stop until their name is number one on the list. When you come across one of them, you're gonna know instantly. The striking, the feeling of panic and shock you'll get as they counter your every move will be breathtaking. You'll freeze up, you'll lose your thought process, and it'll be all over. Can you tell this has happened to me a couple times? Does my PTSD give me away? Pro players can really only be countered by other top-notch players, although there are still some things you can do to potentially kill off a pro player. Third parties are a very effective way to kill a player regardless of skill level. Hitting hard and fast is the right way to go. Here's another crazy effective method, which is not only a good tip for killing pro players, but everyone in general. Put yourself in the most advantageous situation possible, whether it be high ground or a better angle. This doesn't guarantee the win, but it guarantees that you have an advantage. Sorta. I mean, there's still a pro, so, you know, good luck out there. Fortnite is a game where creativity and strategy run wild. That's why we see almost every week top players in the World Cup qualifiers pulling off something astonishing. Whether it be with a new item or a new building technique, there's always something new. Speaking of pro players, we have a new coaching service on Instapro where you can play with the best of the best. Make sure to go check that out after this video. So here's where we wrap things up. We hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know which type of these players you are, and if we missed out on any other types of players, let us know about that too. I hope you guys enjoyed, and don't forget to like and subscribe and get updated on the latest video, because we post daily. See you guys next time.